Discord. What's going on, guys? Joey here. I am here with uh, Isaac and Jesus. Say what's up, boys. Hey, what's, what's up? up guys? And uh, today we're just going to run another episode of uh, the Bunker Boys podcast. Um, very, very strange times. Very strange times right now. Uh, Nationals got canceled. Jesus just put up a, a very significant meet, in my opinion. Um, and I wanted to definitely talk about that. Isaac's about to compete. And, uh, you know, these two, they both came to me on their own, like very separate. I don't think they knew each other at all. And then um, they just kind of became friends. And I could just kind of see the energy, um, you know, and the camaraderie through through Instagram. And, and uh, you know, that is like – one of the most rewarding things that's kind of like a byproduct of, of what, what we do here at flex is like, you know, you, you just, I just try to get people that are like-minded that are, they have a winning mindset. They want to be successful in, in the sport and, you know, put them together and, you know, we can kind of feed off of each other and things like that. And you guys seem to become really good friends and it is, it's a great thing to see, especially at a time when, you know, we don't really get to be around, you know, friends too much. You know what I mean? So, it's just going to make it even better when we all meet up one day. So that being said, um, how you guys doing? What's what's going on? Are you guys – how you guys hold it up? I can go ahead. first. You can go first. I'll go first. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, I just got done competing on Saturday. Uh, but I'm currently self-quarantining in Waxahachie, Texas. So it's about three hours uh, north of uh, Boston. It's because uh, I think right now there's like a 3%. – there's like a 3 Three times multiplier that you can contract COVID in Austin than anywhere else in Texas. So uh, just taking some precautionary measures before heading back home. Um, so we're just fortunate enough to have a place to crash out here. So yeah, man, we're just coming to you from uh, from Waxahachie right now. So is this another house that is not occupied at the moment, or is yeah, there okay? So there? this is no, this is nobody's here. It's just uh, me, my brother, and my cousin. Just everybody who went with me. So um, this is actually my sister's old apartment. She literally, like, had bought a house, her and her family. So, like, the timing of all this is just, like, I mean, yeah, perfect, honestly, because she had moved, I think, on Friday. So we, while we were in Austin, she had already moved into her new house. So this, like, was completely clean. They took out everything. So, like, all we have is, like, some air mattresses, and, like, we went to HEB. Like we are, we're masked up. We have a bottle of Germex in my car, um, so it's just the way things worked out for us to go, have somewhere to go to quarantine, so that way we're not taking it back home to my mom. Like it was just like the stars aligned, pretty much. That is fascinating to me, <laughs> and that is like so good because if I had a place like that then, you know, I, I wouldn't be worried about, like, oh, man, like, when I come back, you know, I, I'm worried about being around this person or that person. Jesus, your camera turned off for some reason. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's who my sister's calling me. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's – that's dope, dude. That's crazy that you could do that and keep keep mom safe. That is, like – that's super convenient. Are you going to do two weeks there or are you going to wait a week or what? how long are you going to um, do it? So, right now – uh, no one's really feeling sick or anything. Like we feel pretty fine, but I think uh, my brother said that he started feeling sick. Well, I mean, around like a week. So we're gonna see uh, how we feel at the end of the week, and then if we start feeling like any type of symptoms, then we're gonna go ahead and like extend it for the full two weeks. So then after that, I mean, like if we're good, then we're just gonna go ahead and go back home. Now wait, your your older brother was the one that got in contact with someone, right? Is he there yes. with you too? No, no, he's no. Uh, he's it's just your younger brother. Right yeah, it's it's me. Oh, okay. It's Pablo, the uh, my brother that yeah, I told you about. Yeah, your younger brother. And yeah. then uh, our cousin. Yeah, so it's just three of us right now. How long has he been in the hospital? He's been in the hospital since Wednesday, I think. So it'll be a. It's a week today. It's a week today. He's been in the hospital for seven days. Is he awake? Yeah, he's awake. Um, so from what I know, like we keep in contact with him every day, and I kind of feel bad for him because it's literally. It's, so I come from a family of six, right? So all of us are literally like just bombarding him, like "How are you doing?" Like every ten minutes. So I feel like I kind of feel bad for him. But um, from what we from what we've gathered, uh, the only reason he's still in the hospital is because he's having a like his O2 levels need to be, I think, like over ninety five. By on his own, so that's like the last thing. Like they already gave him, 
I forgot what the name of the medicine was. So what the, I think the treatments that they're doing is they're giving them like a type of medicine, and then if that medicine works, then like they'll like, just let them like recover. But if they're like having more aggressive symptoms, then what they'll do is they'll go ahead and give them a plasma transfer from somebody else who that, has already had COVID, yeah. recovered, and then that way the antibodies get transferred. And then I don't know if he did get the plasma or not. He might have, but I mean I think like he's uh, free to well not free to go, but they're they're just waiting like any day now for to, to let him go. So things are looking pretty good. When they let him he, go. Uh, I'll let you go, Isaac, after this. Uh, when they let him go, does he have to quarantine, or is he, like, good? Um, They told him that he was pretty much only infectious for, like, 14 days. So I think by the time he had gone, like, he had uh, got tested to the time he went to the hospital. It had already been seven days. So the nurses told him that... Seven days from day on, that day on, like he would be free to go, like to go, and like he wouldn't really be contagious. But I mean, like, I wouldn't trust it, man. Like, there's just been so much misinformation. There's just been so much different data that honestly, man, like, I think it'd probably be better if he did quarantine up until he was like not sick anymore, and then that way he'd be able to go back to work. Because I, I don't know, I guess it'll just be how he feels. Um, Isaac, what were you gonna say? That was actually was my question was going to be like if he was able to leave and he still had seven days to go where was he going to quarantine but if he's just going to if he's yeah. I didn't know he got tested seven days after he had, yeah, he was in yeah, contact yeah yeah he had got tested it's just because uh, he was working it's because he's a uh, he's an equipment manager slash uh, project coordinator for the company that he works for so he was actually working still but in a hotel and I guess he just wanted to get some things done before coming home. Um, yeah, so he was trying to just, I guess, leave in a position where he really wasn't going to be overwhelmed when he came back. Does, is everybody at work, like, freaking out, like, oh, crap, someone got corona, now um, we all got to get tested? Or... Yeah, I think, I think that's what happened. I think, because right now they're getting ready to fire up for a big project, so there's not really, like, a big hire, so it's really just all the office people. So it's, like, five people, I think, in the office, and they all got tested. And I think my brother was the only one that was positive. Because, like, he had already been quarantining before he got tested because he had been feeling sick. And my brother is, like, kind of – he's not super paranoid, but, I mean, with how the world is right now, if you get sick or anyone gets sick, you kind of got to be, like, on the side of error and be like, mm, got to be careful. So he had already been so quarantining before he got tested. Um, Isaac, you work in a – uh, restaurant and what are you? Are you full time or part time? Uh, I'm full time. I usually work like forty hours a week. Yeah. So I mean, what is that like? How annoying is it to have to wear a mask? Are you, are you worried about bringing it home? You know, tell me about that. Do you have to wear one of those screens? Like I have literally driven by restaurants here and I see the waitresses outside and they have like this like helmet thing, and then yeah, it's like a screen, the face like masks. a fucking window. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't have to wear those, thankfully. We do have to wear masks, <laughs> and I'm like a bigger guy, and we wear like pants and a long sleeve shirt. So like, I'm I'm already hot and sweaty. The mask just adds another thing to it. I do have exercise induced asthma. I haven't had like any like bad problems yet, but it, it definitely is harder to breathe. Uh, we actually had two people have like full on asthma attacks and like have to like leave from the mask. And, like, they went. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was in the same day. They had, like, full-on asthma attacks. The one, actually, I think she ended up, like, falling, like, passing out. And then the other one was just, like, freaking out um, because it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, hard to breathe. And we're a pretty busy restaurant. We're kind of, like, I mean, I'm in PA, and there's Erie, like, which is on the lake, and then Pittsburgh. And we're, like, right in between. So we get, like, all the traffic from both ways. And both of those areas are closed right now. They're still in the red. So we're green. So we're getting people traveling from everywhere to come. And so we're like, we're busy. So we're also down staff because everybody's on unemployment and they don't want to go off of unemployment. So we're down staff. So I'm working like 45, 47 hours a week. What is the um, minimum wage over there? Uh, you know? Well, for a server, for a server, it's 273. Huh? So I, oh, because you get yeah. tips? <laughs> yeah. So I, I get what I get tipped. Um, 
I do have to tip out my like the people that the hosts and the like the basically like the cleaners and the bartender. So I do have to tip them out two percent of all of my sales. It doesn't go off of tips, but um, it's definitely been uh, it's been different. We have a lot of new like regulations. Uh, we have to like every single time we touch a dish off of the table, we have to wash our hands. Uh, every single time that we take food out, it like can't pass any other food. It, it has to like if we have dirty dishes, it has to go completely away from all the other food. Uh, like I said, masks. Everybody that comes in the restaurant has to wear a mask until they can they get to the table and then they sit down. We've had some trouble with that, with like people just like not wanting to wear them. And my my manager yeah. is like super. She's like super strict on this stuff because she can lose her she can yeah. lose her business license, her liquor license. She can lose everything. So um, she's she said yesterday she's like if if they don't want to put on their masks they can go somewhere else because I'm not like, I'm not losing my business over this so it's definitely been it's been different and tensions have been high for sure because everybody was just off of work for for two months so it's been it's been wild. Has anyone given you guys issues like yo I want food and they're like, you got to put a mask on and they're like no I'm not putting a mask oh. on. Oh oh yeah absolutely we actually literally just had a guest yesterday. Uh, we had a one of our nicest people that just like they they're a seat they, they they're a host they seat the people one of the nicest kids uh, his name's Cameron and he was seating somebody and he like asked them to put their mask on and <laughs> they said go go take that mask and shove it up and then yeah. and then uh, our manager sent out and we had, had to ask them to leave but it's <laughs> yeah man people out here people in PA kind of they got their mindset and if if you try and get in their way they just they don't care they're they're pretty pretty. Hard, hard on, uh, on Father's Day, I went to go see my dad, and it was the first time that I had gone out um, in a long time. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I, there's a spot right next to my house, in between my house and zoo, that I used to go to all the time. So I kind of miss going there. And I thought about it, and I was like, it's Father's Day, you know, he's willing to drive out here, and I know that they have outside seating. It's like kind of a nice patio thing. And I'm like, if I'm outside and I'm like away from everybody and I wear a mask and I'm super careful, I'm pretty sure I could be fine. And I didn't think it was going to be that busy. It wasn't, it was, it was busy, but it wasn't crowded. It was like all the seats were taken, but I had enough where like we took a long table and I could sit on one end and he could sit on the other end. Um, but there was a dude in there that didn't have a mask on and the guy that was serving us, he would like pull his mask down to like talk to us. And I was like, what's the point? <laughs> you know, like, he literally yeah. would pull his mask down. So I'm like, you know, and they didn't, they were just being like super, I mean, California is very, um, I feel that the management would be less likely to put their foot down and be really stern with someone. Um, whereas in other places, like I could see in Texas, if you don't listen, they're just going to like get you out. But so I went and I ate and, you know, it's been two weeks and I feel, I feel fine. So I think I did the right thing. And also my dad's really old and he had a heart transplant. So he has to take medication, which literally suppresses his immune system. So I thought to myself, you know, if he had it, it would for sure, he would for sure feel it because like of all people, he's old and he has to take medication, which is suppressing him. So, you know, uh, I think I'll be safe. And like I said, I feel great. I'm actually like, um, I'm down 12 pounds from the Arnold and I'm, I have, like I feel way healthier and I've been going on walks and stuff because I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, I wanted a squat 800. Like I wanted a squat 800. I was very, I was doing great. <laughs> Everything was, you know, going up and, and I was like on my way. And then, you know, the, everything happened. Well, first, I mean, before the Arnold, I got really sick, not from the Rona, but from food. Right. And that like, gosh, darn salads, <laughs> the timing of it was so bad because it was at a time in training where I can't, I can't make this up. I have to deload for the meat, right? So I'm just whatever. I just fucking I have to take the loss, right? I still still put up 750 and I was like, "All right, cool." And I was like in my mind, I'm like, you know, everything is still new. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of anxiety going to the Arnold cuz everybody was in masks. I was just like like it was so annoying. Like even if nationals were to happen, I'm going to tell you guys this right now. Being on the plane with mad people and having to wear a mask and wash my hands every five seconds and like, you know, I just don't, it's just so, it's like, is it worth the stress? Is it worth me freaking out? And, and you know, I know you guys are going to listen and wear masks and stuff, but what if someone doesn't? What if you have like one guy that just doesn't care and doesn't want to listen? So it's just like, I don't want to have to take that home. You know, my mom is uh, older and my grandma's super old and like I go over there to help out all the time and it's like... You know, I don't want to, even if I'm around Tina, then Tina can't go see her parents. 
you know what I mean? So it's just like there's so much to think about and, you know, a big – or let me finish on the 800 squat first. So I, so I wanted to squat 800, and I was on my way, and I was very convinced. You know, I was very, like, dedicated to it. Um, and then, you know, I had the Arnold, and then I came back, and uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I weighed in at the Arnold at, like, 260, right? So, I, hope, I mean, I don't know if I was heavier, but – uh, Let's go. I don't know. I don't know if I was heavier because I was a weigh in, right? And I don't know about you guys, but like, you know, before me, uh, I don't like if I don't cut weight, so I don't really, I don't really have to do anything. But I, but I'll stop drinking water a little bit early, just a little bit early, you know, just uh, just to make sure that I wilts up. Well, I'm slightly lighter, um, you know. But I do everything else the same. I sodium like crazy, um, and I, so yeah, uh, I I want to squat eight, and then the Rona happened. And then I was supposed to go to Sheffield, and then that got canceled, and everything was, that was going on. And then I just kept hearing on the news, you know, people that are overweight get get hit really hard if you know, and da 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 da. And although I'm healthy, all, so before meets, I don't do any cardio, I don't do nothing, I just power lift. That's it, because I and that is like you, I literally get a huge boost from that, but it's not as healthy, right? So you know, I came back and you know I started doing on walks, and I said I want to get my walking up, my capacity up. I want to be able to do. We usually do like an hour of a brisk walk uh, around the community with Chloe, and like I, it was, I'm not gonna lie, it was hard for me at first. It was like kind of hard. Like I would feel dead after, but now it's nothing. You know, now I mean I'm down 12 pounds and I've and I've worked on myself, so I could do that no problem. Um, I actually today I was thinking I want to do the uphill. Like we have like a big hill. I want to do that and just like kill myself. Like I'm I'm starting to just really get my. Um, get my stride back. I used to run all the time. We have hills here, California, like where I'm at, we have a lot of hills and I used to run the hills. I, my, my community college that I went to play football at the hills that I used to run, run are right here. You know what I mean? Um, so, and just with the Rona and everything, I just said, you know what? I got to be healthy. Um, you know, people depend on me for like, my mom depends on me, you know, I have people that work for me and they depend on me for the livelihood. Like, I don't want to, I don't want something – I don't want to get sick and be one of those people that because I was so focused on squatting 800 that something happened to my health. Um, so, you know, I just said I'm going to just start dieting and maybe I'll go back up when the world is safer. But for now, I just need to – I need to take care of myself. So, yeah, I mean I've just been really like – I remember before the Arnold, my heartbreak. Uh, you know, like when you go to the grocery store and you put your arm in those thingies that like squeeze your mm -hmm. arm to check your blood pressure? And mine was like high. It was like really high. It wasn't like <laughs> stupid high, but it was like I remember it being higher than normal, um, and which is very shocking for me because my whole life I've always been like super healthy. And uh, no worries, says this. Um, and you know, I I took it. I just got that down, and now like, you know, my heartbeat used to be like resting. It was like eighty. Like that's not good, you know. And now it's like fifty nine or something. So I mean I handle business, you know, um, and I and I got to a healthy range, um, but but I'm not gonna lie, the Rona was like a big motivator in me doing that. So I don't know if I'll squat eight, but I just um, I think until the world is in a better place and I feel more comfortable about it, I I think I'm putting that on hold. Um, now I do want to say because you guys are both big boys, you can be bigger and healthy. Like I could have just stayed 260 and just then more walk, did more car, a little bit more walking, right? It doesn't have to be crazy. Mm -hmm. You just need to have, and also like doing the high rep squats helps a lot. You know, like sometimes when you taper for a meet, I do this with most people where I take you, you, you haven't done eights for a little while, right? So you know your cardio starts to go down and stuff like that. So I'm sure that played into it, but um, you know I. I wanted like you could still be overweight. I mean, football players. You guys will play football. There's a lot of really healthy overweight football players. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so you can be you can be healthy and be overweight. Um, there's limits. Like of course, like I mean, you could be you could do all the work you want and be like insanely overweight, and you're gonna have problems. Your heart is not gonna be able to pump that hard. You know what I'm saying? Um, like Jesus, you're a bigger dude, but you do seem mm -hmm. health conscious. And I don't see you as an unhealthy person. And I even asked you recently, I said, how do you feel? You're a big dude. Uh, if you don't mind sharing, I mean, it's literally public information. How much do you weigh yeah. right now? And, like, how do you feel? Like, do you feel, you know what I mean? Okay. So, all right. So I turned 22 June 5th. So I weigh myself about once a week mm -hmm. on a Wednesday, just once a week to keep track. And I, would, I was usually walking in at around 338. 
That would be like my midday weight. But uh, I just kind of went to town that weekend. We went to this Brazilian steakhouse. And, like, I swear to God, dude, like, my mindset was literally to surpass my limits because it's, like, it's a Brazilian steakhouse, man. I don't know if y'all have been, but it's, like, it's a buffet with, like, top – it's, like, A1 beef. So it's, like, you can't just ignore the fact that you're there to just stuff your face, right? Yeah. So every time I go, my goal is to, like, eat more than I did last time, and I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> I think that – Surpass <laughs> limits no matter what, whether it's yeah, training, lifting, no eating. What. Yeah. That's, that's so, uh, the acceptable time to leave the pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then um, that weekend, man, like I ate a lot. Like I, I just stupid a lot. And then so when I came back and I weighed myself, I had gained like eight pounds. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. And like I noticed it because that Monday – uh, my belt felt stupid tight. Like, it was a stupid <laughs> tight. Squats felt a little uncomfortable. And I was like, man, I don't want to. I'll wait till Wednesday. And I was like, I'll try to diet down till Wednesday and see where I'm at. So then I, I got on the scale. And, like, I, I mean, I gained eight pounds. And I was just like, man, like, this isn't any bueno. Like, I was kind of my whole. And, and like, you know, because, like, we had literally signed up, like, two weeks out from this meet. Mm-hmm. So at this point, <laughs> like. My belt felt tight. I was, like, <laughs> kind of fatigued. Like, deadlifts were, like, butt cheeks for, like, the past couple of weeks. Like, it wasn't looking, like, ideal, right? None of it was ideal. So, like, I kind of just had to, like, make a game plan. So, um, I, I did end up losing about five pounds, but I weighed in last Saturday at uh, 347. But that's because I didn't weigh until 2 um, I, by that time, I had woken up around 6.30, 7 a.m. Um, I had already had, like, about a gallon of water. I had, like, a big-ass breakfast. I ate, like, one of those big omelets from IHOP. I ate a stack of pancakes. Like, I was carved up. Uh, I ate, like, so to weigh in, like, so I'm pretty sure, like, fresh in the morning, I'm probably around, like, 3.42, 3.43. But, yeah, man, like, in high school, uh, I was walking in around, like, 260, 270 uh, when I quit football. Ball, I went up to 280, and then I've pretty much been over 300 pounds since I was uh, 18. Um, uh, the and then this is the heaviest I've been, but at the same time, it's also the strongest I've ever been. It's uh, the most active I've ever. Well, I take that back because I used to play <laughs> football, so it's not the most active. But I mean, you like, are active. The most, you are active. Yeah, I I, I am active because yeah. like at work, like. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't walk as much as Isaac does, but, I mean, like, I do a pretty good amount of walking. Like, I help out. So, well, what I do, I work at Lowe's. Do you um, have a pedometer so I, on your phone? I, I, I'll i show you yeah. it on your phone. Uh, there's the app, Steps app, and it'll, like, it does the whole week for you. It shows you charts and stuff, and it just does, like, um, shows you how many steps you take, like, throughout the week. And it's crazy. Like, I remember when I went to Sweden, I mean, I – fucking had to walk everywhere and i looked at the i was just curious like and i looked at it and like the days of the travel i mean it was like 24 hours of me being awake my steps were like a million you know what i mean and i felt dead <laughs> so you know you you could probably if uh, i tell people you know if you even for you isaac if you guys are at work you guys work jobs and you have a particularly strenuous day where maybe they're like all right Jesus, we need you to go I don't know, move all these pallets over here or something and yeah. you're moving a lot more than normal. You could look at it and be if you're training if you're training after work, you can be like, "All right, I literally took triple my normal daily steps. I'm probably going to feel it a little bit in training." You know what I mean? So it's kind of good to check yeah. those variables. Um, like you know like the like that day where I sent you that 695 on deadlifts, mm. like that had literally been the first deadlift under 700 pounds that I've seen for a single like since we had started working together. And, like, that day, man, like, it was stupid hot. Like, I had been outside, like, three times how more many than we- I How many weeks had. out were we? I think that was, like, because I had signed up that Tuesday, so we were, like, two <laughs> weeks out. So, on that Thursday, um, we had been, I think we were, like, 12, uh, hold on, no, because we had four sessions a week, so it was two, six. That was ten sessions out. That was 10 sessions out, so about a little over two weeks out. Um, so. Did you – I mean, from my perspective, I I can take a lifter from anywhere, and and as long, if I have two weeks, 
Shit. I mean, I could even do it if we had one week, but that would definitely mm. not be ideal. But I could Joey's get someone. one week peak. I could get someone ready. You know what I mean? So I wasn't worried. Mm. I was like, I know that after rest, you know, that's going to be a last deadlift. You're going to be strong. Mm. Did you, did you, like, did you trust the process and know, like, okay, I know I'm going to recover from this and yeah. show up? Or were you like, fuck, man? Like, some guys, I'm not going to lie, if the day like that happens, you're literally pulling over 100 pounds less than what you can pull. And they just freaking, mm. they panic. You know, they, they're dismantled. But, like, like I said, you know, I always tell people, when you have experience, you can create for you have foresight, right? And then you can predict the future. Yeah. You can literally say, if we do these things, then this thing will happen. Um, and it gives you a lot of confidence. So you having gone through two preps with me now, you know, you always know you're going to be right. And you don't have that stress of like, oh no, like, am I going to be strong? You know what I'm saying? What am I going to do? Yeah. Um, I'll let you say what you're going to say, but then I'm going to carry that over into Isaac. Cause I, you're yeah. two weeks out, two and a half weeks out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Two and a half weeks. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, man. It's hard not to stress. It's hard not. To <laughs> it's not as natural. It. It's natural. Yes, because it's like at that point I had pulled 857, so that was like 100. That was almost 160 pounds less than what I had like my max right to this point. And then like for I don't know for what reason, but for like my I never had I've never had grip issues. But whenever we started like bunker training, I don't know if it was because the extra humidity or something, or like nerve damage, but for whatever reason, like the grip in my left hand had started like just going out. So literally, like you know how you, like that same day, you told me to start doing more holds. I went to Ross and I bought like one of those little grip things <laughs> and I just literally maxed it out. I think the max it has is like 90 pounds. So I maxed it out and I literally would just like, I would do, I would and actually, between war zone games, I would pick it up Straight, and yeah. I would do like yeah three sets of fifteen, and then I would end it with like a fifteen second hold after each set, and then like I was like, there's no way on this goddamn earth that I'm gonna miss a deadlift <laughs> on grip. Like there's no way. No, so, that's like, honestly one of the worst ways. When you finish it, you literally you've locked it out. <laughs> you're done, and you just drop it. Yeah. So like well, I, I was just like I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that it's there on Saturday. So, like, literally, like I told you, I was like, I told my, my brother and my cousin, like, like look, dude, like, 12 a.m., I'm shutting down, I'm going to bed. Like, I started drinking maybe, like, half a gallon more. Like, I was watching my food more. And, like, I was just, like, my entire mental focus was just into recovering. I was, like, I had no desire to go out of the pocket. I had no desire to, like, go out, to do nothing. It was just go to work, go home, like, like just everything was just in order after like that two week mark, and it was just like mm, that, whenever I pulled that like seven sixty five, like the week after that six ninety five, I was just like, man, God's too good, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I, I will say for being a big boy, both of you guys for being your weight, um, like Isaac, even if I gained like a couple more pounds and was your weight, you look a lot more solid at that weight than I would. I, uh, Jesus, you. You are the <laughs> of all of all the people that weigh what you weigh. I can't really think of anyone that looks as solid as you. Like, can you guys think of a super that's like, like just a big dude that's like country, I'm, country muscle would be the only other one. Uh, he's he's solid, but he's, I mean, I don't know. I think Jesus has just got a big <laughs> ass frame. Like, I'm not gonna yeah. lie, he's not. Um, I, I I haven't seen Jesus in person yet. I have been next to Country Muscle, but like you don't. You don't seem um, like – like I could literally be a 93. I was a 93 in the beginning. You know what I mean? That's how much weight I could lose. Granted, I have put on a lot more muscle since then. I think 105 um, – like a light 105 is probably where I would end at. But, um, yeah, I mean some people – I think that plays a, plays a role into it as well, like your body composition. Like if you're super sloppy or you're super sloppy, I mean then that's yeah. going to probably lead to less health. Um, like I said, there are football players, there are examples, but I just think, although, like, I'm I'm very conscious, like, yes, I'm trying to have you guys be as strong as possible, um, but when we get into those crazy limits, you know, like with Jesus, there are things we can do in the off season, like maybe a little bit more walking here and there, nothing crazy, it's not really going to affect your lifting, but just getting the heart rate, you know, working a little bit more and helping with recomp a little bit, it's just going to help keep you healthier so that when we do have to compete, and we can't um, 
uh, you know, we have to really focus on powerlifting and we shouldn't be doing that extra cardio, then, you know, mm. you're, you're going to be like way healthier than you need to be to get through that, you know, month or whatever. And then we just go back to it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I, our Jesus, we already talked about it briefly, but it's very simple. Literally anyone listening to this, um, <laughs> has just died. <laughs> Literally just anyone listening to this, it's just like adding some walking here and there. And it doesn't need to be crazy stuff. I mean, lifting weights helps a lot, right? Lifting weights certainly helps a ton. Um, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, Isaac, you saw yesterday when I was doing my squat session, like that last set, I want to check out, you know, like I'm just like, fuck, man, like I'm, it's just, you got to just be tough. But part of me, and I, I don't know, and this is something that is hard to give people. I don't know if you guys feel this way too, but when you know you have a workout that's going to be challenging, do you, do you get like, um, like I'm ready to do this work? Like I'm ready to like, I, I want to go, I want to do it. You know what I mean? I want to do it even more because I know it's going to make me better. I know that it's challenging and I know that it's going to, it's going to just bring out the best of me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's times when I'm like, I'm just dragging, but you know, those sessions, those super important sessions, regardless if I'm strong or not, I just, there's a small part of me that doesn't want to do it. But then there's another part of me that's like, like I'm ready. I'm ready for this pain. <laughs> Yeah, that's usually how I feel. I'm usually, if I see, like, a hard workout, I'm usually more excited. I, I would say I'm pretty, like, even keel. I'm pretty even when, like, with excitement. I'm just always excited to train. But when I see, like, a hard day or I got, like, a set of eight at eight or something like that, I'm like, okay, okay, we work. You know what I mean? Like, day. it gets you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, can you guys, uh, we'll go Isaac, then Jesus. Can you guys tell me? What made you get into football, and then um, did that help you kind of find powerlifting? Um, and, you know, are there any – I already know the answer, but are there lessons that you learned in football that you take into the gym with you now? Go ahead, Isaac. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely – so for me, our little gritters is what we call like our, our junior football. That starts in fifth grade. And in fifth grade, I was uh, I was 200 pounds, like five foot four. So I was a I was a chubby kid, and my my mom signed me up for football, and like I had always wanted to do it. So I did football fifth through senior year, and I always I was strong, but I was never fast like Joey. Yeah. And um, I was I was taller and bigger than basically all of the kids, and I was a fairly uh, mental uh, football player as well. So I would I could outplay them as well. Um, I just didn't have the speed and I, I run like a chicken with my head cut off. So uh, I, I knew I was never going to be able to like totally like make something out of it. So I'm always something who like I want to put 100% in, but if I know that I'm not going to get a very large reward from it, I'm not going to do that. So I, I could I saw football as an opportunity for me to stay healthy because I've always been health conscious. I've never drank, never smoked. Like I, I just, I, it's just not me. So it's just something that I just I know what I put in my body and I try and be as healthy as I can and football was a way for me to do that. That's also why I wrestled. I hated wrestling, but I did it just to stay healthy. And how then, old were you when um, you did that? Uh, wrestling, I started my uh, my freshman year and I went to uh, junior high states that year. Uh, and then I was a backup behind someone who ended up placing fifth at states. Um, and PA wrestling is insane. Why didn't um, you like wrestling? So I, uh, cause I have asthma and I, it's just, it's hard. Uh, and with my autoimmune disease, it's like, it's, it's there, it's really hard to describe, but that feeling of like lactic acid building up and you know, like when you just lose your muscle, like it's just like muscle failure from like lactic acid. Like if you have like a bodybuilding day or something like that, I would get that like in the middle of matches, even in the middle of football games, I'd lose like basically feeling in my legs. Like there was one time uh, we were running, we were doing conditioning and we were, I mean, our conditioning was stupid. We would lift weights for an hour and a half, condition for an hour, then we would wrestle for two hours, and then we would condition again. Our, our practices were so dumb. But um, one day during condition, I completely lost feeling in my legs. Like, that feeling when your foot goes to sleep, that from my hips down, I couldn't move my legs. I was literally just sitting on the ground. We ended up going to the hospital. They said that there was nothing wrong with me, that I was just extremely dehydrated, and they pumped two bags of saline in me in 45 minutes. Um, so I have had like problems with that. Um, but when I found lifting was when I was really like, okay, like 
I like this and I can be good at it. So like I would like look at people and I, I'd see like leverages and like what people weigh and like how I compare to them. And I'm like, okay, if I work, I can be the best at this. And so then that was when I really like put a hundred percent in and I didn't want to do football in college. Cause like, I know like Joey, you've even said like a ton before, like college messes people up. Like there, I know so many people that are like, Oh, well, I loved college ball, but man, I got this hurts and this hurts and this hurts. And like with lifting, it's like, yeah, you get aches and pains, but you don't have like permanent injuries for the rest of your life. And if I was just doing football to stay safe, it wasn't worth it for me. In my opinion, um, I aim to get my, you guys, my lifters to this point that I have reached where you're just not going to get hurt. If you're going to get hurt, it's like something stupid, like, fucking the way it was misloaded or you know i you know what i mean because it's drinking water i will not squat if i didn't have my if i didn't drink before if i didn't carbs before if something happened and i didn't sleep and i slept like absolute trash and i'm literally running on one hour of sleep if it's a heavy squat day i'll just i'm not even gonna do it i'm just gonna push it to the next day because one there's no meat coming up two it's not worth it man like you like I just want people to know like if you have to push your training a day it's not the end of the world if something happens and you need to miss a week because your family needs you it's okay like you know you can get that back and it's not worth it and you know you reach a point where you're like okay in powerlifting we're literally making our body stronger right if you make your body super strong it's not gonna break you know it can break if you don't take care of it if your mobility sucks and you're trying to do dumb things you know, if you go out of pocket too consistently, you're playing with fire, playing with fire, playing with fire, and something happens. You know what I mean? But you're going to get to a point where you're just not going to get hurt anymore. Um, you know, it might sound crazy to people listening to this, but like, I mean, yeah, little things happen. I mean, squatting yesterday, I felt something like weird in my shoulder, but it was because my grip was slightly too narrow and I, I'm trying to rack it. I don't have anyone to help me and I'm on the ear rack, which is the worst rack I ever created. <laughs> um and i'm not like mobile for some reason it's hard for me to do the racks in and my arms wide like that hurts even more so i just i gotta do what i gotta do but um you know you're gonna get to a point where you're just not gonna get hurt man and if you and if you do have a little tweak like it's very simple to change it you know we're very cognizant of our bodies and i think one of the benefits of being bigger i mean my squat behaves like a big person right like a big person squat i only have to do it i only do it once a week right um, you know, Jesus is already like that. So, so, uh, and with Isaac, I don't remember how many times I have you deadlifting, but I'm pretty sure you're two squat, one deadlift. Yes. Yep. So let's say you put, let's say, and, and with that low of a frequency, if we, if we tweak something by the time we go into the gym the next week, if we take care of business outside of the gym, we're going to be fine. We're going to already be healed, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you know what I mean? And, and one thing that I have learned from you, both about you both is that you guys both have good um you guys have good intuition whereas like uh jesus i don't remember what it was but i think there was something you went you were in the gym and you only did two sets because something was weird it was on squat yeah, bench was it no, bench? i think it was, was well it okay so it's been a couple of times so there's i think there's only been four sessions that i've not completed so when we first started working together uh for that first prep I remember it like it was on a Friday. It was the last bench day of the week, and I had already did uh, my first set, and then on my second set, my tricep uh, just felt really weird. And like it's because my entire philosophy is that your confidence has to match uh, like your physical. Uh, what's the word? Like, that I, makes I, sense. I don't think that makes sense. Is, yeah. So it's like if my confidence is not where it needs to be then to me, there's no point in even attempting to wait. Unless, and then we talked about it later. Like, obviously, when we start, like, competing for uh, first place at Open, like, for Nats and stuff, there's going to be times where, you know what, we're going to have to nut up and shut up. But, I mean, like, that was uh, for our first meet. And then, like, to me, it just wasn't worth it because I'd rather uh, take the L. Well, not take the L, but I'd rather just side, uh, be, uh, be careful. And then I think whenever we were prepping for the Tina's meet, um, I don't know what I did that day. I think, I think it was, it was like squats. By... Yeah, it was squats. I only did two sets. And that was because my quad started, like, it just felt a little off. 
Um, so but man, but you was... call the audible and you come in the next time and you're usually good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. it's little things like listening to your body, making those little adjustments. Uh, Isaac, recently you said your knee was messing you up. We did a little change and you're good, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, you did that 690 yesterday or the day before. Yep. Yeah. You Monday. know what I'm saying? And it's just like little stuff. Um, and I, and I, it, it is imperative for young lifters that are watching this. You have to get to that point um, through coaching. You can get there sooner, but it's just like, you got to be able, it's so mature to say, you know what? I did two sets. I already took my single. I'm kind of feeling weird right now. I don't want to play with fire. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to tell Joey what's going on. I'm going to call it and then we'll just fix it on the next one. You know what I mean? Now, that's yeah, so valuable. You know what I'm saying? Like you just got to at all costs, you got to keep the train, keep it going, keep it going. If Even if it means like take a half step back to take, take a big step forward. It's so mm -hmm. important to do that. And um, I don't know, I, you guys can tell me if you felt this way, but a lot of young juniors, especially they feel like they need to be the best right now. And they want to prove themselves mm -hmm. right now. So they, they, they go hard and every, they're like, no, you know, I'm not a bitch. I'm not going to back down. And they just, you know, they keep, they, they will never adjust the weight. They're going to keep the weight the same and they're going to do all their sets with that weight. And they're literally going to grind every rep. And it's just like, you know, you're going to burn out quick, man. <laughs> you're going to, you're not going to make it long. <laughs> you just died again. You, <laughs> you're good. That's, but, yeah. It's comic relief. <laughs> I, I, I do have like, I have like kind of strong opinions on that because like I am very health conscious, which is like, not something that most 20 year olds have they kind of just are young and whatever but i think that a lot of people have that mindset of like i want to be the best now and stuff like that is because like me personally i found lifting and lifting is like been the only thing that i love and like not not the only thing but it's been the biggest thing that i love it's been like the biggest impact in my life and stuff like that so like i in my opinion when i see like another young lifter they have that mindset of like oh i found this thing i'm gonna do everything i can so I'm going to 100% on the gas and then they end up getting hurt and then they fall off. Like you look at how many juniors or teen lifters or stuff like that end up going to the open and being like a threat. Like there's not that many because they all are like stepping on the gas and they can't, they can't mentally take it and, and take those half step backs. Instead, they just push it and push it and push it. And that's what's so valuable. Like I find with your coaching is like, you you embody that and like you teach that to like people that's why i say i always tell people like you are for me to find you for me to find you as a coach in the time that i started at lifting was the perfect timing i literally just just transferred into the usapl was going into my first nats like like everything and if i would have been like oh well, i'm going to get this coach and then they just percent they just use percentages and just beat me and beat me and beat me and end up getting hurt and then I'm like, oh, well, maybe lifting isn't for me. And then I fall off. Like, uh, things could be totally different. So that's like mm -hmm. something that's super valuable with you, like yourself. I want to say thank you for that. And I also want to reiterate that point that you just made. The amount of juniors that go through their juniors and then they go into the open and then they be become relevant in the open. I, there's a couple, but it's like rare, you know? Um, yeah. And it's just a sad thing to see. Like now, hearing you say that, it's just like I've been around this a long time, and I've seen so many people come and go. And I think to myself when I look at some of these people, like man, if they, they're just mismanaged, or if they had the right guidance, or if they could check their ego, or you know, they could have so much potential. And you know, it's just sad. And you know, there's a lot of different things that these lifters deal with, and a lot of it comes with self doubt, or they have depression, or they just. You know, they're insecure about their lifting. In my opinion, if when you're constantly overshooting and it, when you're beat up, it's because it's because you're so insecure with your own lifting that you need to always try to prove yourself. You need to always like reaffirm like, oh, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. See, look, look what I did. I'm strong. When it's like you got to have times where you pull it down, man. It's OK to it's mm -hmm. like recovery is so important. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been watching a lot of UFC lately and um Henry Cejudo is a re retired champion, and he's kind of got like a chip on his shoulder, and there's some things about him I don't like. But, you know, he did say something really good, which is rare because because uh, you don't really hear UFC guys talk about this. Um, but he was saying how recovery is key. He said, if if my body, even this last guy who fought Mike Perry, he's like, if I feel like crap, if I'm getting beat up, like what's the point of me sparring hard? Like I need to recover first, and then I can, you know, kind of go back and push it. And I just think... 
having you guys like I'm telling you, I've been like I said, I've been around this a while, and seeing you guys at a young age already have those lessons. You guys already have those lessons. Like you guys are gonna be good. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let you stray. I'm always gonna like make sure that it's like I see this path. Imagine if like I'm in the future, right? And I and I see history, and I know that history needs to go this way. It almost reminds me of Whis from Dragon Ball. Like they they like they're not there to like really mess stuff up, but they know that the world is supposed to go in a certain path. And if anything crazy like you know gets off, then I just go back in time and make you do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go back two minutes in time. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's redo that attempt. Let's go back. But um, <laughs> but yeah, man, it's so it's so important to 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 learn those things, and you guys already have it, and that's why I know, like, you know, it is worth it for me to commit to helping you guys 100 percent because I know you guys are gonna reciprocate that that commitment and that energy towards being your best. Um, yeah. now, uh, so Jesus, after this, I'm gonna actually. Uh, is the video that you sent me of your meat, is it a full, is it all the videos? Is it all the lifts? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's uh, it's just like a little vlog video. But, yeah, all all nine attempts are on there. Okay, so uh, after this, I'm going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to do a stream where I actually, like, I want to go through it, and I'm going to look at everything, and I'm just going to talk about it. Because people mm -hmm. said they wanted a meat day, and I was like, why not better than Jesus's meat? Um, <laughs> You know, and we'll, you know, I'll just break mm -hmm. stuff down. So that'll be fun. Um, so really quickly before, like, that's going to be more detailed. But I just wanted to ask you, um, with your meet, um, how did it run? Uh, is there anything you were, any, anything unexpected happen? Um, you know, do you think that they did a good job, like, given the COVID situation, taking care of stuff? And did you have any complaints or are there any, any things that you were, anything that you were really happy about? And yeah. Um. So yeah, the meet was very. It was very fast, and you literally had to germix your hands before every attempt. And I told Isaac this like immediately after I was done, and like I was like, bro, like you're gonna literally like make sure you like rub that germix in, so whenever you get the chalk, it's not like muddy. Um. But like yeah. So had a germix before every squat attempt, every bench. Hold up. And every. So yeah. you. It's a USA. You USA wash your hands. Rule. You put yeah. the chalk on, you do your squat. Then you go wash uh -huh. your hands, you put the chalk <laughs> on, and then you do a squat. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Some of those guys were like, yeah. Hell, man. I yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it was, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Like, there, I think I think on my last bench, uh, you can see where I'm, like, rubbing my hands extra tight, and that's because I put a little bit more German <laughs> than I had wanted. So I was like, man, like I'm up. I gotta get this like in my hands and dry so the bar doesn't slip in my grip. Because that'd be we very bad. Think about yeah. stuff like that. Can you imagine the yeah. line for the bathroom if nationals happened? Can you wow. imagine the line to wash your hands? Oh my god, dude. Yeah, but I mean, that, besides that, um, I didn't really have any complaints. If I could have a complaint, it'd probably be that we didn't have. Um, it's, so. We had a lot of no-shows, so what they did is they combined both uh, flights for session two. Um, so it was, I think there was like 16 lifters. So it was one big flight of 16, and um, there was literally only 20 minutes. As soon as, like, squat was over, 20 minutes, yeah, yeah 20 minutes to warm up. That's how started, world is. Right? That's how world is. Okay. Yeah, it's and like miles. you do it, and Third it's, uh, I think it was, it might have been 15 one year. No, it's 20 it or 15, 15, but it's quick, mm -hmm. man. It's quick. That's how. That's why I kind of like. I like the Arnold, but uh, for the big boys, it's kind of it's kind of rough. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so the meet director was actually he's actually friends with one of the guys that goes to that powerlifting gym that I go every now and then mm -hmm. when I want to hit kilos, and he told him that I was going. So he specifically set aside a set of kilogram plates. For me to warm up with, so I didn't really have to share weights with anybody. But I mean, like when I warm up, usually, um, so typically what I opened up with on squat, that's typically what I would hit for like a six to seven single on squats. But for me, the pound plates, that's uh seven warm ups, right? Like I had to cut short. I think my last squat warm up was like five reds, so it was like five ninety eight. And I just went straight to 750 Oof. because time was so much. Oh and like, my it was, God. Yeah. And then 
you're probably gonna. This is a little bit. I'm more so thankful you didn't get hurt, man. I would snap. That's me, I would snap jump. up. <laughs> so and then for deadlifts, like I was okay. So my whole mentality was like, okay, like I can feel where I'm like getting tired, but I have to like start making moves. Like okay, like do I take one plate or do I do one plate then go three plates and then go five plates or do I go plate 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 and I was just trying to find ways to like conserve energy because I, I had a, something told me that if I would have gone like 320 for my last warm up that would have probably like affected my, my dead lifts it would have probably made that 766 a little bit slower and then the 800 so then like my last warm up it was because I have confidence because I used to do that before and now we've talked about it where I told you I would tell you every now and then that I was making an effort to do one more warm up before my top set just to get more of an accurate feel of uh, the RPE and stuff like that just to make sure that everything was how it's supposed to be but like for me man like I was just feeling like I kind of got to conserve a little energy so I'm going to have to like do a little bit more of an unorthodox warm up so then that's how I did for uh, so for bench I just went up to like 398 that was my last warm up uh, because by that point, the f people had already started lifting, and I was like, okay, like, um, it's going to be, like, seven minutes before I lift. And, like, based on how my bot, like, I was relating how I was feeling in that moment to how I feel in training because, like, sometimes I'll, all I need is five minutes to recover from my next set, and then sometimes a little extra more. So then, like, just based off how I was feeling, like, after my warm-ups, after squats, and then after bench, I was like, okay, I need, like, maybe a minute more or I'm going to need as much time as I can to make sure that, like, I can get the lift. So, like, that's what I did on deadlifts. On deadlifts, I did one red, and then I went three reds, and then I went five reds. And then by that point, I think there was, like, three lifters before me um, just because, like, they were moving fast. Like, they didn't really have to add, like, too much weight until it was my turn. So, literally, like, lifter one through 12 was, like, literally they would add, a, like, a plate or, like, a, a yellow – and, like, that was it, right? It was very, like, small change in between. So their lifts were going fast. So I'm like, okay, like, I got to think how much time do I have? Like, what can I really do? Like, where like what, where do I cut? Like, what do I prioritize? But, I mean, like, I mean, honestly, man, like, that kind of did go through my head. It was like, okay, I could go to do 700 for my last warm-up just to be safe. But on the other hand, like, how much energy is it really going to take? Like, how much energy do I have left? Um, so well, I was, there like, was you know, 766? Yeah, it was 766. Yeah, I would have like, done, if I was there, I probably would have had you do somewhere between, like, six, like 680 ish, or maybe a little bit yeah. less. Yeah, 675, and then just call it. He's like, he's like, yeah, I did 405, and then I went I was, to 750. It took 255 pound jump. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. But I mean, like, it ended up working out just because I think the first time I pulled 770, I had literally stopped at five plates. And then, like, I didn't start adding an extra warm-up until I started, like, doing singles in the eights. When I started doing singles in the eights, that's when I was like, okay, I got to have one more warm-up between, like, 690 and, like, 750, and then go to eight after that. But, uh, like, yeah, man, like, everything everything was just kind of moving, like, so fast that I was just, like, ooh, this is a risky call. But, I mean, I mean, like, it worked out. Once you I get mean, those first sure. two in, you're good. Yeah. Like, you don't need to, you know, you're already warm and you'll, you'll hit it. Um, what do you think? I mean, I think I already talked about it a little bit with you, but mm -hmm. um, what do you think happened on your third pull and from your perspective? Um, so – so I, w I actually watched the video again last night, and, okay, so the way I felt, like, it just kind of felt, it, it didn't feel like I had locked it out, and my whole, th and I told my brother, and my brother told me the same thing, he was like, bro, if you knew how to finesse that, you would have got it, because <laughs> when I watched the video, I did have it locked out, but I think right before my hips locked out, I saw my foot where it was coming up. That's and so weird. Like, I saw that. It's, yeah. Yeah, you did. It's like you did it, um, but we just need to. I don't remember what I told you, Stay so I'd have to look back. Like I'm very in the moment. I'll come up with keys and I'll send it to you, and then mm -hmm. like I'll move on, and it doesn't really stay in my long term memory till I have it in front of me again. Um, 
But uh, I mean, your grip looked good. Uh, it's not. It's so weird because you literally lock out, and it looks like the knees almost extend a little bit sooner, but uh, than than they yeah. need to without the hits coming through. Oh. I remember what I told you. Um, I really, in every repetition, I want you to pull your hips all the way through and get your shoulders back. Every single repetition, there's no more, you know, kind of like when you're trying to get through it. It was the day you were beat up. You were, you mm -hmm. were like locking out, but you would like almost get to lock out and then put it down. We got to just complete mm -hmm. everything and really build those last two, three inches. And I think it's not going to be a problem. But like I said, that weight's not even going to be a problem for you. You had a lot more on bench. You're going to be stronger on squat. And oh, we're going to actually have like a prep <laughs> and not two weeks. <laughs> like people don't even but, realize what you're gonna do, man. So yeah. it's all good. We're just gonna honestly, like, yeah. My biggest takeaway was bench. Like, I was not expecting bench to just be popping like that. Like, it was literally I don't even know what was going on with like bench was just, when you when you like, peak so hard. That day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, he, I like, mean that's that's like, um like I said. I mean I told you I'm a little fuzzy with it because yeah. like we have two weeks, but. I'm pretty yeah. sure that this should be somewhere there, but it's all good because you know what that means? You just hit <laughs> you just hit a thousand on your second pull and then I'll be like, What yeah. do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, like literally on the email you sent me for the taper, I think like the title was like, uh, I'm a little worried, but I like a challenge to get done. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Hey man, like yeah, I mean you guys challenged me. Sometimes you present me with yeah. situations that are um less than ideal and then it's up to me as a coach to use my creativity and my keys to kind of put it all together and make it this thing that's gonna you know give us a good result on the day so um yeah, yeah it was yeah, great yeah, seeing you did, do that I mean, yeah i mean we could say that it was a success and i think i even touched a bit on a little bit of my video how like realistically it was a very successful meet like the things we did the things that like i did like it was very successful but i mean like obviously like this is literally our second meet. Like, we have so much more to do. And it's like, we talk about this a little bit every now and then, like, on our private messages. But it's like, we there's more. That's pretty much the, all there is. Like, there's more. There's more. And that's what we got to focus on. Yeah, man. Um, I think, like I said, I think it was good. In my opinion, it was somewhat of a historic performance. Um, you have the third highest total of any you know, of anyone in the USAPL currently in the rankings at age mm. 22. And uh, in my opinion, um, if we're just talking about strength, like straight up total, I think you're the strongest junior. I don't think – like, can you, can you guys think of any junior right now that's stronger than that? Uh, yeah, I think the second closest would probably have to be Joe. But um, I think it's because I don't really – I've talked to him a couple of times. But from what I've gathered, like, I think he had gotten hurt. That's why he didn't do nationals for 2019. Pena, and, you uh, mean, Yeah, Pena. Okay. Um, but I don't know what was going on exactly, but, I mean, I'm pretty sure had he not been hurt or he hasn't been going through injuries. I, I think he recently just had a kid. Yeah. So he's kind of really? been away from the gym for a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, so, How old um, is he? I mean, obviously, he, he's 21. He's is really he he's really tall. He's like six two uh, or six three, but he's really he's really big. He has a good squat. Um, yeah, he has a really good squat. But, um, I mean, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna say like I, like I just for me my confidence comes in the fact that like overall like I'm not the best. Well, I'm the best deadlifter junior without a doubt. But I mean, like when it comes to squat, uh, Joe beats me, um, but. And I think Michael Astrologer, I don't know how to say his last name, Astrologer, he has the national junior record at 540, uh, 245, so I think that's Bench. like 550 or something like that. Yeah, 245. Uh, KG I mean, you're not, you're like, not far behind, man. <laughs> I know, I know. I was thinking about this, man. Like, I could literally have, like, the best junior deadlift and the best junior bench. But, I mean, I'm going to have to work my ass off for it. But, I mean, that's Push what makes pull, it worth boys. it. Push, pull, boys. No, no, yeah. no. We get to full power. Um, <laughs> full power but, yeah, man, yeah. I mean, it's – I just think, like, I'm not someone who is going to brag constantly. Um, sometimes just mm -hmm. by posting you guys, people think I'm bragging. But in a way, it's just me showing appreciation and being proud. Um, but I think it is important, whether it bothers people or not, to recognize when someone is pushing limits and setting the bar high and, you know, 
like just kind of uh, raising the up in the ante and stuff. I think it's important to acknowledge those people, whether they're whether they work with me or not. You know, shit. If someone if someone beats one of my lifters, I'm gonna go up to, and he does like a perfect performance and everything. I'm gonna go up to him, and be like, hey man, good job. Like I'm gonna shake his hand. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know. So I you you know I think I think people. I'm. I don't understand what it is. I mean, I know what it is. Like a lot of people, they're so fascinated always in like the smaller weight classes because the majority of the people that compete are small, right? They're, the 74s mm -hmm. and the 83s are going to be the, you know, where most people are. So they're always going to follow those people because everybody wants to compare, right? But I mean, like you're the strongest junior in my opinion. I mean, I, you're the strongest junior. And I think, and I think, um, you know, you – uh, Isaac, we talked kind of briefly. You said you wanted to do something in the juniors before nationals went away, but I think it's important. Um, like, yes, you're killing juniors right now, Jesus, but I know that you're thinking about the open. You know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. where your head is at because you're like, you know, that is where – that is like the ultimate highest level. That is the goal. And, I, I, Isaac, I, I'm not too sure if that's what you're thinking. I mean, I know you've mentioned it a couple times, um, but – I'll pull it over to Isaac. Um, you said something about sad about nationals not being there because you wanted to do something in the juniors. Yeah. So I wanted to explain this because it's like it's really hard when I'm I'm in your Twitch chat and I'm like trying to type and you can just talk. Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> this isn't what I mean. <laughs> but um, right now, so for me, um, like I, I re I'm just going to reiterate this. Uh, like someone who's like you, who you're older, you've gone through life. Like you talk all the time where you're like, I'm 30 and I've gone through all these things throughout life. It's crazy that I still have so much life to live and stuff like that. Anybody that's younger, essentially their lives not mean more, but they've had less lives. So everything means more in like, in just like that perspective. So for me, you I mean guess, like, like, you mean like, um, you mean like if you take your total life, and you condense it down to a less amount of years, all of their attention goes into like hyper focused on that little minimal amount of time. Okay. So that's why you exactly, focus on the yeah. got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So, well, and then there was a little bit more. So like the, the other thing too is like, it's not a matter of like, I want to win juniors for like, woo, I won juniors. But it's a matter of like, when I look back, I could be like, I won three junior titles, this many open titles. And it's not like, it's not like I'm like, oh, like, Juniors is the only thing that matters. I don't care about the open and stuff like that. But at this point, like I, I know I'm going to be going into the open and I, I, I'm fully aware that I need to set my sights on that. But as of right now, like I'm also like still 20, like I don't turn 21 and basically until like the beginning of next year. So for me, world spot is like number one. So I don't know how they're going to do world qual like spots for next year, but winning juniors was number one. And who's the other nine junior for nine, that is Tristan a junior still? No, so no, Tristan's yeah. aging out. Cody Carpentier is aging out, uh, and then it's John Vasquez and uh, uh, one other one. I think John might be aging out soon. Uh, so he could compete Worlds next year, but then after that he's done. I mean, is um, there going to be a Worlds next? Like, how would we have Worlds next year? You know, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's so crazy right now because like we don't know. So I was bummed because it would be like World Spot, and then another thing was like I was 19 last year and I was in Team 3. I really just wanted to go from like winning Team 3 to winning juniors because like in my opinion that's impressive. That's like going from juniors to open and winning because juniors is it's still like it is only like a three-year age difference but the amount of growth that you're going to make in that three years is way bigger than you're going to make in any of your other years. So for me to win in a junior class like after just being a teen was like it would have like made me proud. So that that was like why I was excited. But I know like for me the number one priority was nine for nine, and then juniors winning would the, like would be second. And then like if I placed in the open like okay, um, I would be excited. But like that's why I wanted to do this meet for prime time was so that I could have that step up. And because no other junior would have been in prime time, so I would have been able to like see their numbers, and then I just would have been able to hit that. And then if I would have placed in the open, I would have been excited. But I know next year it's I mean now we have a full full extra year to grow but opens is it's it's on the sites for sure i yeah. would have been super i mean this this prime time would have been great because we would have had i would have had you i would have had amanda i would have had uh jesus um i don't know if they would have had 105s on that day or what but it would have been cool to have 
you know, all you guys in PT um, with like prime time is a very, it's a very great set. It's a good session because you have, you have your own rack and there's not a lot of people and you have more resources than you need in order to have a good meet. Um, and I do, and you guys will experience that. I'm telling you now, you will experience that. Um, and you know, it's unfortunate that Nats isn't happening, but at the same time, like it's a crazy time. And I would like to believe that the universe is doing, maybe is doing this for a reason. Maybe there's something, maybe there's something going on that, um, I can't, <laughs> maybe there's something going on that, um, there's something going on that I just can't see. And you know, there's silver lining here, you know, um, you know, we have more time to grind, more time to just kind of get it done. And, you know, you guys have both proven to me that you guys will execute, right? Um, and like I said, I don't care about gym lifts. I don't, I really don't. I really don't. It really bothers me when people get all hyped up over a gym lift and I'm just like, you got to do where it counts. If you look at someone's database and they have all these gym lifts and they have sloppy form and on meet day they go like four for nine every time, it's like they're probably going to do that again unless they change something drastically, right? Um, mm -hmm. so when people, you know, they want to try to compare, I think what really bothers me too, is like when people try to elevate themselves to, let's say, let's say Jesus, who just competed and there's some junior that's like putting up big gym numbers and he like goes, yeah, man, can't wait to go head to head. It's you versus me. And it's like, hold <laughs> up. You're literally trying to, you're trying to say you're his competition by doing that. You're elevating yourself to his position when you have not proven yourself in order to say that yet. So in my opinion, you look like shit, not you, but that person, they look shitty for trying to do that when they have not done it yet. First, like if you do it and you're right there and you prove it on the platform, okay, now you can like kind of add yourself to the conversation. But for me, it's about earning it. It's about getting it done where it counts under pressure. You know, when, when thing, when the situation isn't ideal and you have to overcome, everybody's got to overcome shit to get to the platform. Right. And you know, it just, you just, you guys got to show up and be game time competitors and like me coaching at the highest levels. You know, what I can tell you is the people that go to those big meets, Worlds, Arnold, you know, primetime, whatever you want to call it, and they execute under those conditions. You know what I mean? When the pressure is in, let me tell you guys, okay? The pressure that I felt when Russ missed two squats at Nationals, oh, yeah. I literally physically could feel like, there was this invisible gravity that was multiplied by infinity, right? And I just told them, I was just like, whatever, like, whatever comes of this, we're going to deal with it and we're going to get through it. But, you know, you're, you need, you are, you are Russ, okay? Get this done. And he got it done. Nope. He, he had one he shot. He had one shot to get it done on his third. And they were they were making him change his singlet and they were telling him he can't wear that. You got to do this. And that was like another thing that was like, Bro, we're literally trying to not bomb out, and the refs are heckling us. So we, he had to overcome that, and he got it done. Um, another thing, I know I'm hopping on him a lot, but this is just like a very extreme example of what I'm talking about. When he hurt his back, he showed up to Worlds anyway. And although we got beat, he's, we didn't get hurt for a whole year. We didn't get hurt for an entire year. We came back and we won. You know what I mean? In order to do that, it's like you just – that to me is respect. You know, that to me is like getting it done when it counts. You know, Jesus can put up big numbers in the gym, but he also gets it done on the day. You know, Isaac is all about, I mean, like when I was at nationals, I mean, I was lifting at the same time, but I kept checking in with Tina, like, how's Isaac doing? What is he hitting? She's like, oh, he's good. Da, da, da. You know, um, I have yet to have a meet where I can personally handle you, which is going to change because I don't think, I think I'll still be dieting. I'll probably be done dieting by next nationals, but the next time I'm at one of your meets, I don't know if I'm going to come. I'll probably, if I compete, it'll be the day before, right? If, if I did, but regardless, I'm going to be there. So I'm going to, you know, the little mistakes like attempt selection and, you know, maybe Isaac's like super amped up. Mm -hmm. What was it? Bench. You were, you really were amped up about bench. Um, yeah. I'll pull you down, but Hey, let's just do two kilos less. Let's just make sure we get it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. build the total and whatnot. So, you know, really excited yeah. for the future. You guys are, you guys are very promising. Uh, is there something you want to say, Isaac? It looked like I cut you off, or, or you had a point. Um, did he? Did he? Did Russ miss two squats, twenty eighteen nats too, or did he just miss one? No, he only missed the third one, and I only jumped seven kilos exact because it was a record. Um, oh, okay. Which is weird. Which is weird. But like I told him, I remember what I told him that day. I told him uh, it was your first time handling that big of a weight in a meet, and you just need to feel it. And then once you, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys know once you feel a big weight, like new territory, right? 
Um, yeah. You feel it. And you're like, okay, this is what this feels like, and then you kind of get used to it, and then you can now now it becomes regular, you know. So, mm. um, yeah, I think there's a, I think at young, such a young age, you guys are for you guys are great examples for a lot of juniors out there. I know I'm talking a lot right now, but like everybody thinks this is like an interview, but we're just chilling, right? And I'm just trying to mm -hmm. like you know highlight points. Um, you guys are young juniors, and I think there's, a, like I said, a lot of things that other juniors can take away from you guys, and I think you guys are role models and setting an example for them, um, you know, and, and I'm I'm very thankful that you guys have chosen me to kind of bring out the potential in you, and, I, and like, if we didn't, if we didn't have uh, compatibility, we wouldn't be sitting here right now, you know what I mean? If we, if we didn't mm -hmm. have, a, like, um, similar interests, similar, um, just, uh, it's like that intangible understanding of like i get you and i know where you want to go then the you know we, then we don't like i say anybody can do there's a lot of coaches that have good like x's and o's but like i always like to say the extra x and flex is like that little x factor it's like that little <laughs> extra thing that you can't touch it you can't buy it it's just i don't even know how i don't even know how to describe it but it's just like a it's like a greater understanding of the of a common goal and once you're all in sync then things just you know they interlock and you end up reaching places and getting to places that you know that 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 you can't put it you can't put a price on it in my opinion so um i'll let you guys i'll let you guys say anything if you want to say something while i look at these notes okay. real quick yeah um, and I, I guess just to add on top of that i think uh, it was like one of the very first conversations we had um and i've told you a couple of times that like before I emailed you, I emailed you, I think, right before National started, um, when I was, like, getting in, really getting into powerlifting. But I was, like, explaining to you, and I guess I want to explain to everybody else, like, my philosophy when picking a coach is that I, from that moment, I, I don't know, I just felt like I was going to be able to, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't think I was going to be able to be where I'm at now in this position. Uh, like have the biggest total for 2020 and so on this early. I thought this was going to be more like maybe a year and a half down the road. I didn't really think that uh, like this potential was there right now. Um, but uh, like I knew that where I wanted to go was it's the same place where I want to go now. You know, like I want to be able to compete against the best. Um, I want to be able to go head to head, like rub shoulders, like look eye to eye when we're walking across. Like that's what I want. That's what I'm seeking. And like I did my research on you. Like I think I, I started watching J Russ's videos. I even I, I told him I'm like man, like I appreciate you, uh, like shouting out Joey every now and then. Because if you hadn't done that, I would have never found Joey. Um, but like, and then I started watching your videos. I was like, because to me. It's such an important and underrated uh, uh, variable, that relationship with your coach. Because, like, and I'll, I'll reference my football days. Like, honestly, like, I was kind of cheeks, man, up until my junior year because I didn't know how to be violent. I didn't know how to be, like, a good football player, you know. Um, and it took my coach getting to know me. It took him bringing that out of me to be able to be the best football player I was able to be. So, like, just basing off the previous, like, experience that I've had, I knew that we had to be able to have some sort of relationship like that where I could trust you, where let's say we're not eight for nine and I need to pull this last deadlift um, to win, pretty much. And I don't have the confidence in myself, but you have the confidence in me, and you know exactly the number... That's like we maybe we haven't hit that number yet, but you know I got it in me. So I knew that that relationship highlights it highlights itself in moments like that. So it's like those are the moments that I want to like compete for. So it's like I knew I know that like I have to have the right people around me. So it was like I did like two months worth of research on you. I watched like as many of your videos as I could to just see like what you believed in, your training philosophy, like all the other athletes you've had, the success they had. Um, like, I think Russ had just won Worlds, Amanda had just won Worlds, uh, you had taken other athletes to Worlds, you had John uh, Worlds, and, like, that's what I want, so I was like, you know what, like, and then, like, the, all the anime, and, like, that's just a cherry on top, man, like, that's just, like, where we can, like, uh, shoot the shit and stuff like yeah. that, so that was just awesome, yeah. Honestly, like, people, yeah. real quick, people sleep on anime, but uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> it's a story, and in that story, mm -hmm. there's a lesson, and that lesson you could take with you and move on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could take that lesson with, with, with like, 
uh, people could talk about, like, you know, I don't know what they think about it. They could think whatever they think, but I'll be like, did you watch a Marvel movie? Okay, then. Then you're in the same boat. You know what I mean? I mean. I know. So. I tried to get Isaac to hop on the wagon, but, I mean, he's a strong-willed individual. I don't think he I don't think he watches anything. I feel like he just works. No, yeah. I literally, I just work in Lyft, man. Good. But I wanted to shout out uh, Tim. Tim, Tim, the, 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 the dome, dome, mm-hmm. man. Because he's the one that showed me. <laughs> Tim's like, Tim Tim was kind of like, he was like the one who basically forced me, not forced me, but he sh- he allowed me to believe that like I could do this because I, me and Tim, I find are like very like closely, re- like emotionally related. Like he puts his emotion into lifting and into videos and stuff like that. And that's another thing with like Jesus, like i would never had that connection with like a coach as well for football because I also couldn't like, I couldn't get angry. Like I'm like, I'm an emotional guy, but like I'm, I'm, I try and be as nice as I can and, like, stuff like that. So I could never, like, flip that switch and just, like, get super, like, mean and, like, aggressive. Like, that's that wasn't me. So I could never build that, like, relationship with my coach. Like, we ran wing T. Like, we had to be ground and pound. Like, I Damn, that. I honestly hey, hated those that's teams. Mo- that's Mojo football, man. I that's hated like, those yeah, teams because I played defense Dude, so. and it was just fucking, man, I, every down <laughs> was just dead. I was just dead. That, that's how we had to rock. So, uh when my when I like couldn't get angry and I would just like focus on technique, my coach is like, Don't worry about that. Come on now. Get angry and then, like, <laughs> they, like, they, like hate me because I like wouldn't get angry. So when I like when I found Joey and that connection really like came naturally like he said. So it was it was helpful for me to like be able to put more in the lifting because I had that like coach connection, athlete connection kind of deal. Yeah, yeah man. Um I remember Russ's photographer at 2017 Nationals, or maybe it was his Arnold. He he was just saying, like, it's crazy seeing you guys work. You guys are more than Coach Lifter. It's, like, beyond that. And, um, you know, it's just it's the intangibles, man. It's the intangibles. Uh, I want to yeah. say uh, uh, it was, like, super busy day, so I had to cut it. But, you guys, it, this is really good. This is really, really, really good. I think it's super valuable for, you know, a lot of people out there. Um, and I just want to say thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, I will put your Instagram links in the comments down below. Uh, Jesus, uh, the meet day video. I mean, I'm literally going to go over it on stream. So like if that's your, is that your YouTube? Yeah. So yeah, it's my bro. It's me and my brothers. Yeah. So they'll, you know, I'll direct people to that, but, um, thank you guys so much for coming on. Uh, is there anything you guys want to say before we go? Um, Go ahead. I think people should be ready to see some more intense, crazy numbers for 2021 because we're – and I told you brother this too. I was like, man, like we're literally going into like the second arc of our hyperbolic time shepherd training. <laughs> so it's like we're literally about to like just – I don't know. For me personally, man, like my me was a really bittersweet result just because mm-hmm. I had done everything I wanted to do. I put up respectable numbers – to where people cannot acknowledge me. They have to now. But at the same time, it was like a factual realization that I still have so much to go. So it was like a, you know what, like got a little respectable meeting, but now it's like, all right, took this week off, like about to get back to work on Monday, and it's just like, man, like let's get it. Like mm, I'm just ready. So I love it. And then I love it. I got, <laughs> I got like three or four little things. So the first one would be like, absolutely take what you have like just be grateful for everything there are so many people that are in worse situations grateful that you have your family grateful that you're able to lift period grateful that you're able to still go out without as much uh nervousness as we had before uh and then like another thing would be that you just want to just quit stressing as much i think that there there are too many people that they just put too much pressure on themselves and like I, one quote that helped me a lot was if you're stressing out about a single particular thing or even like a couple things, you stressing out about that is literally you going through that stress twice. So why would you force yourself into doing that, that stress twice? So just just relax. Everything will work itself out, and I think people put too much pressure on themselves. Trust the process. Let's get a, let's get a be, hashtag be <laughs> grateful in the comments down below. Um, thank you guys so much for making it this far if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.